Good morning, Ridgeline Church. How's everybody doing today? Is everybody loving the time change? Yeah, no, no. It was way too early to be trying to sing this morning, let me tell you. That's why I'm going to make all you guys do it with me, right? Let's go ahead and stand up. Let's get ready to praise and worship this morning, y'all. Hallelujah 
for us, that God that does it again and again and again in our lives, that one that gives second chances, that one that, that get, overcomes our enemies, God. We pray that this morning that you just come and speak to us today, teach us something new from your word, God. Speak to us through Pastor Jimmy, God, and I pray that everyone in here would just open their hearts and their minds to receive that message today. It's your name we pray and ask these things. Amen. If you don't mind, uh, please remain standing. Is our God not an awesome God? So great, so faithful. It's amazing how good he is to us. Well, my name is Frank. We want to take a moment just to welcome you here at Ridgeline Alma. If this is your first time visiting, there are cards in the back of the back in front of you in the back of the seat. Uh, take one of those, fill it out. Let us know about yourself and your family, please. Uh, also, if you are wanting to join as a member, if you want to join the ministry, if you have a prayer request, those are great ways to let us know. You can drop those off at the receptacle uh, box there in the back on the left and right. Also, uh, if you haven't sent in your selfies yet, please do so. Uh, we would love to know more about you, see your face, put names and faces together. You can do that at Selfie at RidgelineAlma.com. While you're there on the phone, on the internet, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and you can also visit our website at RidgelineAlma.com. Take a moment and tell everyone you're glad to see them. Welcome to Ridgeline. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Sorry about that. I had something to take care of real quick. Man, is God good? Amen. Can we give him a round of applause? Absolutely. So, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there. There'll probably be sleet or snow next week, okay? So just get prepared. Hey, but this, I'm getting used to it now. I didn't even, I didn't even 
go to Walmart this time. I mean, we have so much bread and milk in our fridge. I'm good. So I think we'll be good for next week. Here's what I want you to do real quick. Look at your neighbor and say, God is good. Now look at your second choice, the person you didn't look at, and say, what's up? <laughs> hey, we're glad that you are here this morning. Listen, if it's your first time joining us, you, uh, you're just kind of seeing what we're all about, man. We're just, we're just a little church in a big building loving a great big God. Amen? We just, we're just people who love Jesus, and we love each other, and we are so thankful that you're here today, and we're excited about what God is doing at Ridgeline. Um, after service, i got one quick announcement, and I'll get started. But after service... Uh, the guys are going to play knockout at the at King's Farm, Zach's house. Um, if you've never done that, it's super fun. It's, it's kind of like basketball knockout, but with guns. So we, uh, we want you to come and check it out. Even if you come and just hang out, we're going to have food there. Don't worry, you don't have to jump in your vehicle and speed there, but, but we're going to do it right after service. That means as soon as you make your way out of church and drop your family off, head over to his house. If you don't know where he lives or you don't have his address um, after service go to the welcome desk and they can give you the address you can just type it into your phone or your gps and it will lead you right there so if you're a guy here today and you have you know some boys that want to go out there and just hang out come on out we're going to have a great time it ain't going to last all day you know guys don't want their whole day tied up we got some farm and you know got to hitch the mule and stuff at the end of the day so so we're not going to spend all day there but we're going to have a good time just fellowshipping with each other. We want you all to show up. So I just wanted to announce that real quick so everybody is on the know on that. Um, we're, as we're journeying through this series, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. As we're journeying through this series, we're talking about how we can change the world by changing our world. See, God has given each one of us a, a purpose and a mission, and He wants us to, to follow it out. He wants us to fulfill it. You know, our theme verse for this series is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. And it says this, that Jesus, let me set it up, Jesus is fixing to preach uh, the Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon ever preached. A lot of pastors pull from it, and uh, obviously we should absolutely pull his style from it because Jesus was the best teacher there ever was. And he was about to, about to deliver this, this powerful, long sermon of just, just awesome knowledge. But when he did, he started off by saying this. He said, look, you're the light of the world. You're like a city on a hill that can't be hidden. Jesus wants us to shine the love and light of Christ on all those we encounter. That's for each one of you. He wants us to go out into the world and shine the light of Christ on those people that we encounter. Listen to me. If you're a born-again child of God, God has an assignment for you. He has a mission for you. No one is excluded. No one, I mean, this isn't government work. You don't got the guy or state work. You don't have the guy standing on the shovel looking at everybody. Everybody has a job in God's kingdom. Everybody has a mission. He wants each one of us to fulfill it. And check this out. If you get anything out of this message, out of this series, get this. Sharing the gospel as a Christian is not a choice. It's a command. Did you get that? Sharing the gospel as a Christian is not a choice. It's a command. Unfortunately, we've made it a choice. That's why the world is where it is today, if you want to know the truth. Why have we made it a choice? We make it a choice a lot of times out of fear. A lot of times we make it a choice when we have are presented this opportunity out of doubting ourselves. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to share the gospel. I'm a Christian, but I messed up last week, and I don't feel like you know, I should be sharing the gospel when I'm not where I need to be. It's kind of like when, when I was a kid's pastor. I had so many, so many uh, 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 workers step down out of children's Sunday school because they weren't where they needed to be spiritually. And I was giving them sixth grade curriculum. Read that. Start there. But we start doubting ourselves and we miss these opportunities. Uh, let's be honest, a lot of time we're in a world now where we just maybe we, we um, are a little desensitized to others' needs. The enemy has done a good job just constantly flogging us with information and, and just negativity and just bad news. Do we get to a place to where we're just kind of desensitized to everything? You know, somebody gets hurt, ah, too bad for them. But that's really the world we live in, and we as a church have to stop being that way. God wants us to live our life if we're ready, as we're ready to lose it. He wants us to live our life out loud. 
He wants us to go into the, the, the highways and byways and glorify his name and show the world that we're different than everybody else, that we are the light of the world, that we're like a city on a hill, that when people see us, we look like a human, we act like a human, uh, or we sound like a human, but we look a little different. Everything about us looks, we just, there's just something different about us. It's because we have the light of the world inside of us. God wants us to see through the junk in people's lives and he wants us to recognize the mission at hand the problem with that is too often we get hung up over our own junk i heard a story of of a young couple they moved to a new neighborhood and they were in the morning or they're in the kitchen one morning eating breakfast and the wife is looking out the window and she sees her neighbor hanging out laundry and she began to make these remarks to her husband man look at her laundry it just it looks so dingy it's so just it's not doesn't look clean like she needs to learn how to do her laundry better or maybe maybe she needs a better detergent the husband just simply sat there and he quietly ate his breakfast and he didn't say anything but every day this happened when she would be outside hanging laundry this man's wife would make this comments of how her laundry always looked dingy always looked dirty never looked clean enough and he's like, she always made the remark someone needs to teach this woman how to do laundry it was about a month later the woman was in the kitchen eating breakfast with her husband and that lady came out and she got to notice and as she hung her clothes up how pristine and clean they looked she began to talk to her husband. She said, oh my goodness, would you look at her lawn? Look how white the whites are. And those colors are so vivid. I cannot believe her laundry looks that good. Obviously, someone has taught this lady how to do her laundry, or she's got some better detergent or something. Would you look at that, honey? What do you think? He looked at his wife and said, I got up early this morning and I washed our windows. As it is in life, what we, when we see people, when we watch others, it depends on the purity of the windows that we're looking through in our own lives. That's why it's super important that when we are trying to change our world, we start with ourselves, making sure that we are continually working on ourselves. Never stop working on yourself in your relationship with God. What happens is the more we work on ourselves, the more we work on ourselves in our relationship with God, the easier it is for us to look through that lens of vision of God's eyes with purity. See, because what happens is the closer you draw yourself to God, he says, I'm going to draw close to you. And then what happens, you begin to look more like him. And the more you look like him, the easier it is to see what he sees. We need to see the world as Christ sees the world. We need to understand that this world we're living in, it isn't hunky-dory, it isn't peachy king, it's lost. It's straight up lost. And it needs help. And we are the help. Tag, you're it. I want you to do something this morning. I want you to open up to the book of Luke, chapter 19. I want to read this story, and I really want to just kind of show you that how powerful of a story it is. Oftentimes, we just read through it, and we've seen pictures and paintings, and it's kind of a misrepresentation of really what happened. Luke, chapter 19, verse 41. And it's a story of where Jesus is approaching Jerusalem, and he's just kind of, he begins to cry. It goes like this in, in Luke 19, verse 41, it says, As he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he wept over it. And he said, If you even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you, and your enemies will build embarkments against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Now that's a short little passage there, but man, there's so much power there. We see in the story of Luke 19, there's a scene where Jesus is fixing to enter into Jerusalem and he is overpowered with emotion and he begins to weep loudly. And it's not 
hear me guys, this isn't some little tear that rolled down Jesus' cheek. Like I, We used to have this painting in our house. I still love the painting, but it was Jesus sitting on the hillside of Jerusalem looking into the city, and it was, you could see a little tear on his eyes. And at the bottom, the name of the painting was Jesus wept. That is not at all what this looked like. It wasn't some little sniffle tear where Jesus, man, this sure is sad. No, no, this word, wept here, it comes from the Greek word. And the Greek word is kleo, which means to, to, to sob intensely. To, to basically sob out loud. It was one of those kind of cries that would suddenly seize you, grab a hold of you, and it would clench you all up, and you would lose control and begin to wail out loud. That's what kind of crying Jesus was doing in this moment. It's what we would call ugly crying. Anybody ever ugly cry before? You know, when you, you get all seized up inside and your face gets all squishy and it's all either pure white or beet red and your eyes are real thin and you just, you just you feel it in your gut and you begin to wail out loud and you can't control it and you're just embarrassed for yourself because you look like an idiot, but it just hurts so bad. That's the kind of crying Jesus, that's how important it was. That's what Jesus was doing. He was hurting he was upset. He was ugly crying. Why was Jesus so moved? What was with the intense crying? Because he's seen a city, a city he loved, that couldn't even recognize the peace that was standing right in front of their face. They were so busy, caught up in life, not focusing on godly things, just going through everyday life, lost that they couldn't even see the peace that was standing right before them. And because of that, because of their refusal to see, he knew one day they would be judged for it. We're in that same situation. We know the gifts of God, and there's people out there that are so busy living their everyday life, they could give two cents about church, about God, they're just trying to build their 401k and keep their head above water. But one day, those people, because of their refusal to see, will be judged for it. And we're the ones that he sent out to shed that light on their lives and help them understand the truth of God's love. The majority of this world, guys, the majority of this world is lost and needing someone to show them the way, needing someone to show them the truth. Jesus has commissioned us. He has tasked us with a difficult and challenging but not impossible mission of witnessing to the world. You know, every year I go get an eye exam. You may not know this about me, but I wear corrective lenses. I don't wear glasses. I wear contacts and Matter of fact, if I were to stop right now and take these little pieces of plastic out of my eyeballs, I would probably walk off the edge of the stage and not be any wiser because I couldn't see clearly. In other words, I got the, I got the vision of a mole. And so, but what happens is when I get up in the morning and I put these little pieces of plastic that's been soaking all night in cleaner, I stick those on my eyeballs, bammo! just like Jimmy Cliff I can see clearly now it helps me if I called you this, this if I talked to you this morning about coming and helping me I want you to come up on stage right now so what we're talking about here is this lost world needs help and I've asked these guys to come and help me I want you just to line up straight across here not you I want you to stand right here just stand right here. Stand right there. Yeah, just shoulder to shoulder. Isn't this a good-looking bunch of young adults? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, keep whistling. Yeah. Big boy. All right. So I'll go to the eye doctor. I'm going to explain to you. How many in here, let, let me ask, how many in here has corrective vision? Like, you need to wear something. Okay. Well, obviously, Cooper. 
We, okay, so most of you have good eyes. So, th- so you two are ahead of the, you're two ahead of the curve. I'm going to kind of explain to them what happens. See, what happens is I go to the eye doctor every year, as do these two. And what they do is they set you in this chair. If you don't know, they set you in this big chair. And then they get these specifically designed lenses. And they begin to place them over your eyes. And they will go, which is better, one or two? One or two? Uh, two. Uh, which one's better? Two or three? Two or three? Two. Two or four? And it goes on and on and on. And then I get confused. I'm like, I don't know. And she goes, two or five? Two or five? Can you do it again? Can we just start back over? And so they're, they're, what they're doing is they're trying to zero in on what your vision is. And when they finally get to that place to where you can see clear, they'll say, okay, now I want you to read that little bitty print all the way across the room but miraculously what used to be a blur now you go d f z v f b very good other eye we haven't memorized by then but you do it anyway so what happens after that once they get this figured out and they realize okay now you can see clearly the eye doctor they will write you a prescription you'll go up front and you'll give it to them, and you'll either order lenses or contacts, depending on what you want. Listen. What happens is, like for me, instance, my eyes need a little help. Your eyes need a little help. What it is, is when I put this plastic on my eyes, it allows the light to reflect a certain way in my pupil so that I can get a clear image. Without that lens, the light doesn't hit right, and I don't get a clear image. The world is lost. The world is lost, and it needs to see in their eyes a church that reflects the love and the light of Christ in everything we do so that that lost world can see a clear image of them needing a Savior. In short, we need to be optometrists for Christ. See what I did there? Listen to me. But here's the problem. Too often when these opportunities arise, when there's this moment where the Holy Spirit has lined everything up for you to witness to someone, we just don't do it. We don't do it. For whatever reason, maybe it's because we don't feel good enough, like I said earlier. Maybe it's because we don't feel like we're ready to talk to someone about Jesus Maybe it's just because we're simply not prepared. A lot of times we don't witness because of our lack of readiness. You know, put it this way. This is what you're up here for. Imagine you're going to be my assistant, my lovely assistant here. Give her a round of applause. You're my big choice at hand, big choice at hand. You are my eye doctor assistant, okay? So imagine going into a clinic And you all have appointments with the eye doctor today. And the eye doctor says, man, I hate to tell you guys this, but all of my specifically designed equipment to help you see clearly, I forgot. But it's okay. It's okay because I was shuffling through through the office here and I found some lenses that might work. I found something. We're going to just try them on. They may work. They may not. Who knows? But I'm going to have my lovely assistant here just to go through here and just... Pick and choose some lenses, put them, on, put them on them. Let's see what we got here, okay? So I don't have my specifically designed stuff, but I do have some lenses, and let's just hope for the best. Yeah, let's just hope for the best. Let's hope that these work. What do we got here? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's so wrong, Jim. All right. Now, so the doctor comes in and says, you know what? Are you a Razorback fan? You got to boop. I'm sorry, Nathan, but all my specifically designed lenses, I kind of forgot at home. But I got these cool lenses. Maybe this will help. And then you put them on, you realize something. 
you may look like a million bucks. You may look like you deserve to be on the front of a GQ magazine. But you can't see any clearer than when you walked in. Everything is still blurry. Why? Because the doctor wasn't prepared. He wasn't prepared. He wasn't ready for you. And trying to throw something together doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You're going to walk out of that clinic the same way you walked in, tripping over everything because your vision is blurry. Give the guys a round of applause as they go sit down. Y'all can wear them. They're yours. That's right. God's told us to be prepared. But the problem is, is a lot of times we don't. In 2 Timothy, it says this. Listen to me. It says, preach the word. It says, be prepared in season and out of season. Be ready. Listen, you're not going to get up in the morning. God's not going to call you on the phone and say, yeah, you got a one o'clock witnessing appointment. There's going to be a lady that has a flat on the side of the road, and you're going to stop and fix her flat, and uh, while you're there, this is exactly what I want you to say. That's not how it works. But he does say, be ready in and out of season. For whenever that time arises, whenever that uh, situation presents itself, so that you're able to step off into it and say, you know what? While I'm changing your flat, I want to ask you something, young, young lady. Have you ever heard of a man named Jesus? As you're going through a drive through and you see this woman's having a bad day, be nice to your restaurant employees. I know, I know everything is slow right now. They can't get people to work. The people who are working, cut them some slack. I get it, you've been there an hour. You don't like it? Cook it home. Be good to them. The drive through people. Walmart, be good to them. Guys, we're living in a time right now where people would rather sit at home and collect money than actually get out and do something productive. So those people who are being productive, please be kind to them. We are the church, and we need to walk in love, and we need to represent Christ everywhere we go. And we need to share that love. Like I said, God's not going to call you and tell you, hey, today you got an appointment to witness. He says, be ready. Because it's going to pop up in the most inconvenience of times. It's going to pop up in that moment where you are having a bad day yourself. But you're going to see an opportunity, and you're going to have to make a decision. Either I'm going to rise to the occasion, or I'm just going to let it by. He sees, he says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instructions. But if we're not prepared, it's easy to let those golden opportunities pass by. As the band comes up here and we begin to close, and the prayer team, if you'd come take the front this morning, listen, guys. That sounds challenging. Maybe even sounds a little difficult to you. you hear me though you do not have to be a bible scholar to share the love of christ you do not have to be you know a doctor in theologies and other religious you don't have to all you have to do is simply be confident in who you are in christ know who he is to you what he's done for you how he's changed your life and that simply comes with spending time with the Father. And when those opportunities present yourself, you don't have to be squirrely or weird or even over-religious. You just have to be you. And you have to show a world what it's like to be a regular person that's loved by the Almighty. That's all it is. It's not rocket science. It's not hard. It's not scary. This world is lost. We need to be found. Think how good you feel when, when you misplace something. Man, the other day I misplaced my earbuds for like, it was like three weeks. They went to another dimension. I don't even know where they went. 
And I'll wear my earbuds, I wear one a lot. And I listen to stuff all the time. And for like three weeks, I just felt like, man, this stinks. I don't want to spend that money to buy some more. And I remember Shannon about three weeks later saying, found your earbuds. I was like, woohoo! I was so excited over little bitty rechargeable earbuds. If I could have done a backflip, I would have done it over an earbud. Why? Because it was lost. Now it's found. Think how good these people feel. Not everybody, even Jesus said, not everybody's going to accept this message, but the ones that do, think how good they feel when they finally feel like they're found. I was lost. I was no good. I was on a highway to hell in fifth gear overdrive with my foot to the floor. Someone shared the gospel with me and I found God. And it changed my life. Guys, I could still be the same loser, sinner, headed to hell, lost as could be person that I was back then, but someone found the time to step into my life, unconvenient as it was. I've told you the story. I made fun of the guy. But he changed my life. You were called to go into the world and change lives. It's not a choice. It's a command. We do that. We draw close to our Savior. Here's what we'll see. We'll see a world as he sees it world full of amazing people, awesome people that are just simply lost. They need to be found. If you would stand all over this place this morning as we close our message. Heavenly Father, God, I'm so thankful, first of all, that I'm saved. I'm so thankful, God, that you rescued me from that miry clay. God, that you set my feet on solid ground. God, I'm so thankful, God, that I'm headed to heaven. No, I'm not perfect, but I'm thankful. God, that you're there every day correcting me, that you're drawing closer to me as I draw close to you, that God, you love me and I know that, that I have the confidence in who you are in my life. And God, I pray that for every born-again Christian here today, that they have that assurance. But God, there's so many in this world, as we're talking about changing our world, so many in this world that are lost and they don't have that love. To them, fulfillment is, you know, going to a restaurant or having a nice home or a pretty car, but God, that is going to end one day. God, you called us, this church, to go into the world, this church, Ridgeline, to go into the world and share the love of Jesus with all those we encounter. We are the light of the world. So God, just help us, equip us, give us that encouragement, give us that courage to do exactly what you called us to do, Lord, to be world changers. God, give us those opportunities and don't let us walk away from it. Let us run boldly to them. God, help us to be the men and women in this area and beyond to change lives for you. God, I pray today, Lord, if there's anybody here today that simply needs prayer, our prayer team is up here. It doesn't have to be about what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter if it's about their marriage, finances, health. You're the God overall. We've allowed the enemy to have too much of a foothold. That time stops now. So Lord, I pray if there's anybody that needs prayer, that they simply bring it to these altars and they give it to you. God, lastly, I pray that we walk out of here knowing with boldness who we are in you. We love you, Lord. We give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask these things. In your mighty name. Amen. These altars are open.
starts today. As we leave these doors this week, as we go out into our neighborhoods, our jobs, no one else is going to do it. Tag, you're it. Let's go change our world. You know, over the last six months, uh, I always wear this watch. I have two, and this is, I, I prefer this one. I don't have a fancy watch. This is just an old black watch I have, but it's pretty complex, really. And for the last six months, I haven't been able to figure out how to keep the time changed. You have to go into it and, you know, do the daylight savings time. We're all feeling that this morning. But it's a good day for me because my watch is finally right again. It's right on time. No more adding and subtracting. I just got to look down and know exactly what time it is. But right now, it's time to give. Thank you for giving to this church. Thank you for paying your tithes here. Thank you for giving offerings. If you can't see what we're doing, you're blind. Because, man, we have, God has absolutely taken a hold of this church and grown us up. He's blessed us greatly. And he hasn't done it with some kind of hocus pocus magic spell. That's not how God works. He's done it through you. And the good news is, we ain't done yet. Yeah, I know how much gas is. Yeah, I know how much milk and groceries are. But trust me, hear me. Hear, I'm not the guy that asks for money. Because I know God's a provider. But here's what I'll say. Don't have a spirit of fear specifically in that. That is one of the number one tools of the enemy. To get you in a place where this feels uncomfortable, you begin to withdraw. Don't do it. Continue to give. Continue to be faithful. That's what God's commanded. That's what He expects. So thank you for those who give. Because God's not done with this church. We've got a whole lot of running to do and a whole lot of lives to change. And your giving helps us do that. If you want to give this morning, we have several ways to give. You can give online uh, through our text, to at, our, our text to give. There's a number that should be pulled up here in a minute, maybe. Uh, if you've never done it, it's super simple, super simple instructions. I don't know if we got that right now or not, but we have a text to give. Also, we have our receptacles in the back, Larry and Bob. You can put a check in there, cash. We have envelopes, however you want to do it. Um, but we just want to say thank you for it. Let's go ahead and pray over our offering this morning. We've got a few announcements, and then we'll get out of here. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Father, that we're able to give unto your kingdom, God. God, I pray that you continually use us, Lord, to be the church, that, Lord, we go out to our communities, Lord, individually, as a group, however we do it, Lord, and we change lives, Lord. God, that when people come here and the lights are on and the heat's on and it feels good and it sounds right, God, that we're able to proclaim that message, that gospel of Jesus. And, Lord, I'm just thankful that people give into that so that we're able to do that, Lord. I pray today, God, that you would bless both the gift and the giver in Jesus' name, and just thank you for continuing to let us run that race you set before us. We ask all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, just a couple of reminders real quick. Ridgeline, as Jimmy mentioned, Ridgeline Rough uh, Cut Men's Ministry is doing the knockout today at Zach King's house after service. Uh, as he mentioned, the address is back at the welcome desk. If you do not know where Zach and Sherry live, uh, lunch will be provided. Also, if you have a, uh, if you're selling also, if you've been selling popcorn for camp, money is due today, so please be sure to get that turned in. And then spots are filling up fast for the youth camps. So if you have a youth or know a youth that would like to go, uh, <clears throat> please get them to sign up quickly and get them uh, with Jake or Kaylin if they have any questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Men, if you are interested in signing up for a softball team, uh, please sign up at the Welcome uh, Center and you can get the with Garrett or Dustin for information and sign up in today if I'm correct on that. Ladies, beginning August the 27th, we are going to begin holding Zumba classes. I say we mean in the church, no, I don't have anything to do with that. Um, but uh, there are, they're going to be on Sunday nights uh, in the youth room. They'll have a class at 445 for the high impact, and they'll also have a class at 6 o'clock for the low impact. Uh, the classes are an hour long and will be free. There are some things that you're going to need to bring, uh, but you can get the list at the welcome desk if you're curious of what those things, what those things might be. Also, uh, we are, whoops, excuse me, all right, we are, whoops, excuse me, okay. Technology, you got to love it. <clears throat> 
Uh, going to have a baby dedication is what I think it says here, and that is going to be October, or April the 3rd. And so if you're interested in that, want to have your baby getting dedicated, please get with us on that so we can uh, get you scheduled. You guys have a great week. See you at Zach's house, or we will see you guys Wednesday night. Have a great week.